Hey everybody, I am Nicole Ricky, and I am cruising out. In this vlog, I visit Wrangell, a small town in Southeast Alaska. I went there a total of 10 times and this encompasses a couple of those trips. So check it out. Let me tell you a little bit about Wrangell. So Wrangell is a small town, like every town in Southeast Alaska, and it's on an island, like just about every town in Southeast Alaska. So Wrangell is on the north end of Wrangell Island. Wrangell Island is 30 miles long and 17 miles wide. The population is just about 2,300 people. So we visited there so our visitors could get a taste of authentic small town Alaskan life. The first stop on our visit is Shakes Island. This is Chief Shakes Tribal House. And this is home to the Nani Ayi clan of the Clinket people. We got to see some totems here, as well as some totems on Kiksadi Totem Park. There were originally a total of 10 clans that settled the island of Wrangell. Kiksadi and Naniai were just two of those tribes. We also stopped at the Wrangell Museum. So Wrangell is the third oldest community in Alaska and the second oldest community in Southeast Alaska. And it's the only city in Alaska to be ruled by four nations under three flags. So the Clinkets, the Russians, the British, and now the United States. Our third official stop was Petroglyph Beach. And this contains the highest concentration of petroglyphs in all of Southeast Alaska. One activity the guests enjoyed was petroglyph rubbings, where they grabbed a petroglyph and some ferns and rubbed the design on it. So I've seen petroglyphs in a few different places, and there is a common spiral design that can be found here in other places. But what's awesome is to see the native form line design on the petroglyphs. I want to tell you a little bit more about Wrangell. So there are 12.5 miles of paved road and then actually 100 miles of road systems, uh, dirt roads, because there was a lot of logging here. Logging was the primary industry in Wrangell. Now some of the primary industries in Wrangell include fishing, tourism, healthcare, and government. A little bit more about that tribal house that we saw, that along with others, are cedar houses. And they're actually built with a groove system, and so there are no nails. And you can see there was a lower door, and it's um, a submissive entrance, and you're supposed to show respect as you enter the home. And also that oval door, that shorter door, was to prevent enemies from coming in. You would have to kind of bend down so you wouldn't be able to attack the people as well. Some other customs of the Clinket people was the chief. So the chief was the speaker of the house. They also had shamanistic practices. Their people were matrilinear, so they were following their mother's line, and they had two different moieties, a raven and eagle, and so they would marry out and across from their moiety. There is no written language for the Clinket language, um, it was only passed on by stories. And so your mother told you a story and you shared your mother's stories. And then the reason that they carved those totems could have been many, many different reasons. One of those was to tell stories, but other totems were shame totems or goodwill totems or good luck totems. So now what you're seeing is a jet boat tour. I didn't get to do this every week, but just about every week there was a few different tours offered by Alaskan Waters. And they were jet boat tours to the Stikine River Wilderness, uh, LeConte Glacier Excursion, and then the Ann Ann Bear and Wildlife Observatory. So in this tour, you get to see bears in their natural habitat. They're feeding on pink salmon in this river that you're literally sitting on this platform right next to the bears. Uh, the tour departs from the city, dock, and wrangle, and we go 35 miles via the eastern passage to the Ann Ann Bear Trailhead, where we hike about uh, five-eighths of a mile to get to the U.S. Forest Service regulated area where you view the bears. As you can see, our guides were carrying, um, carrying big guns. You can see that we're walking on bear trails where there is some bear scat. And so we never encountered a bear while we were on this path. And when we get to the platform, we're guarded by rails, but the bears were out there.
Another cool thing on this platform was a photo blind where you literally walk down right next to the river so you can take an up close view at the bears as they walk right in front of the observation deck. Changing
This is back in the town of Wrangell, Mount Dewey Trailhead. It's called a mountain, but really it's just a kind of a large hill. Somebody counted, I think it was maybe 750 steps, a little bit less than half a mile to get up here, but great views of the city and it was fun to take guests hiking up here. So the Stikine River is located in the heart of the Tongass National Rainforest, officially the Stikine Lacan Wilderness Area. To get there from Wrangell, we have to first cross a 17 mile wide Stikine River Delta. So this is a more open area. We're going through the waterways until we get to the mouth of Stikine River, which we actually go approximately 70 miles um, up this untouched, pristine wilderness area through spectacularly stunning mountains. Um, that are covered with lush rainforests and large waterfalls on our way to Shakes Glacier. Unfortunately for this tour, uh, Shakes Glacier was kind of filled with a bunch of icebergs that restricted our access to the face of the glacier, but it was still fun to navigate around these glaciers, and I was able to do this tour again and got to the face of the glacier later. <laughs> for watching i hope you enjoyed this vlog if you did please remember to subscribe watch my other videos i have a lot more videos coming about alaska so turn on your notifications so you know when i post them and i will see you next time bye <laughs>